People want to hear about this story. But of course, if you flip on your major 24-hour cable news networks, they're simply just not talking about it. That's right. So a report came out of the Wall Street Journal that said Iran is working to undercut Trump in presidential election, U.S. spy agencies say. And they say that they've observed Tehran working to influence the presidential election, probably because Iranian leaders want to avoid increased tensions with the U.S., an official with the Office of Director of National Intelligence said during a press briefing. So we're, we've been talking about this, and, and we saw people very interested in it, but one of the biggest problems with this story is that it's not everywhere. Yeah, At this point, you'd think with how much the Russia hoax right, the Russia. was rammed on everyone that you that this would be something uh, hitting wall to wall coverage. This is a confirmed report. Right. It talks about Iran continuing efforts to fuel distrust in U.S. political institutions and that their propaganda mills and online personas, a vast web of them, uh, to spread disinformation and have notably been active in exacerbating tensions over the Israel Gaza conflict. Hostage swap between Russia and the United States during a very uncertain time with our relationship with Russia. And of course, this. Uh, has some pretty big ramifications. And of course, the conversation has come to, Rick, uh, well, well, what was the swap? Obviously, we're happy the Americans were freed. We always want to see that, and specifically these two who have uh, been imprisoned for quite some time. Uh, But who are we swapping it for? What does the deal end up being? And I just saw a tweet from you that really, or ex post, that really expands upon this. And um, it's a pretty rough situation understand that we've got different issues going on here. The families of individuals who are held against their will, who are hostages or prisoners, they have a a keen focus on getting their loved ones back. They shouldn't coordinate with the government. They shouldn't think about the precedent or the slippery slope that it sets. They need to be focused on getting their loved ones back. We get that. We understand that they have a very a uh, sincere desire to get their loved ones back. But public policy officials have to think about uh, something else. They have to think about the slippery slope and the precedent that is set by raising the price uh, on, on Americans uh, just simply for hostile governments to get terrorists back home. And so that's where my concern here is. I have helped individuals, families from outside the government negotiate to get their loved ones home. And that's one hat that that you wear and you don't think about the precedent. You just literally try to get them home. But when I've been a government official and it's my responsibility to make sure that we don't have a slippery slope, you can't do these exchanges. They're they're not a good idea. There's an individual that I just highlighted on X that uh, when I was U.S. ambassador to Germany, this terrorist, this Russian terrorist, drove his bike in the Tiergarten, which is a park in Berlin, right next to the U.S. embassy, in the middle of daylight, shot a Chechen, and kept uh, going through the bike in the bushes, and eventually was caught by the Germans. Uh, it took a while. We had to really push the Germans to to show them that this was a Russian plot. They arrested the guy, they put him in prison, and the White House has been leaning on the Germans the last several weeks to release this individual, this terrorist, this guy who murdered somebody in in the middle of Berlin in broad daylight. The Germans have now released him. He's gone back to Putin and back home to Russia. He's one of the people and the top person that was just exchanged for very innocent Americans, a couple of journalists and and some others. Now, uh, again, the families, of course, uh, are are ecstatic, but I'm very concerned about the precedent that this sends. Americans overseas now, the price just went up on their head. They need to be very careful about what they're doing because uh, we are all less safe because of this deal. The president tweeted, I will not stop working until every American wrongfully detained or held hostage around the world is reunited with their family. When you couple that with the soundbite that we just heard talking about uh, questioning whether allies matter, they do, they do matter. How do you think the Israelis feel right now? When he's making speeches about you have to treat your allies right and it, they really matter, and also that we won't stop working until hostages are home when we know that there are American hostages being held by Hamas right now. 
Well, I don't want to see any hostage swaps. I don't want to see any hostages taken. And this is the world that we're living in, which is why you need leaders like Donald Trump who actually go in and utilize the other parts of the U.S. government, the other tools, sanctions, uh, serious sanctions, isolation, tariffs. All of those issues are how Donald Trump would get individuals returned home without doing the ridiculous uh, swap. So you take Pastor Brunson, for instance, who was held against his will in, in Turkey. Donald Trump said to President Erdogan, I'm going to ruin your economy tomorrow uh, if you don't release Pastor Brunson. They released Pastor Brunson because they believed that Donald Trump was going to do something to their economy. And so that's the type of negotiations that we need. Somebody who doesn't just look into the prisons and say, who can we swap? It's, it's such a, a terrible, easy way to do a, a, a prisoner swap, but it makes us less safe. It's certainly uh, the moments I miss of uh, President Trump it were moments where I think he's even been quoted saying, it's like, don't be crazy, but give them the potential to think you may be, that you may do something that could destroy their country uh, to save one person, to save one American. And we saw that happen firsthand. Rick did and the ACLJ d team did as well with Pastor Brunson. And of course, they did ask Joe Biden, just you know, did they did he speak to Vladimir Putin? To which he replied, I don't need to speak with Putin. So there you go. Done. I don't need to. It's fine. At this point, I'm a lame dog president. What does it matter? We talk about the fact that polls are shifting and we've seen some polling for for uh, Harris rise significantly or at least even out. There's commentary going, how would you even give this any credit? Why are you talking about this? Or even, like you said, Mike, like, hey, let's maybe focus on one of the interesting parts about this, which is she has a pretty significant record in terms of she was part of this administration the last four years, all of her time in California. There's a lot you can actually talk about if we start focusing on that, like you said, the important issues that actually matter that shouldn't really then impact the polls in some ways, because it's a clear uh, who you would support or who you wouldn't support. But if you get lost in these personal attacks, if you get lost in these, uh, like I said, almost the meme culture of it, it starts to become a concern because you have a lot of people who will be turned off by that. Either they're not going to vote or they don't understand the real ramifications here of what could be a Harris presidency. Yeah, I agree. I mean, ultimately, when you really look at it, most people, I would say, are, are concerned about providing for their families. They're concerned right. about how tough it is to be able to afford the things that you need to support yourself and, and those that you love and care about. They're concerned about the increasing pressures from millions of illegal immigrants crossing our borders. They're concerned about the prospect and the increased likelihood of nuclear war. These are all very real things that transcend Democrats versus Republicans. And when they see politicians resort to kind of the basically who are distracted away from these issues, right. this is when they tune it out. And they're like, OK, well, you obviously don't care about us and what I care about. So I don't know why I should listen to you anymore.